time, Mission Moonbase, Episode 2. It does technically have a different title screen, but you wouldn't really notice unless you were looking closely. Let's have a look at the story. We've read this bit, but uh, when we last saw Duke, he had just barely survived an encounter with Dr. Proton. Somehow Duke managed to penetrate Proton's captured city, beat his tech bot guards, and forced Proton to flee to his moon base. Using Dr. Proton's time transport machine, Duke has decided to chase him to the moon and stop him cold. Well, at least that's the plan. Precisely how you get to the moon with a time machine, that's left up to your imagination. So, Duke, you managed to find my secret moon base. My tech bots will soon be the end of you. Your tech bots were beaten on Earth and I'll defeat them here. Your terror will soon end. I headbanged to that riff. Alright, so this is my first go, and not at all a second take because I had the sound settings incorrect. Uh, and therefore I haven't practiced making these ridiculous jumps, and so I'll probably stuff them up just as many times as I just did. I can't believe I jumped over that robot without taking damage. Yep, what did I tell you? It's gonna be rough. I have had... Oh my god. Episode 2 and 3 for quite some time, uh, since the 90s, but uh, I suppose I've, ne I've not played them anywhere near as much as Episode 1. I just feel like if I wasn't playing this for the internet, I would make this jump first go. Uh, yeah, episode two and three are the registered episodes, which, as discussed in one of the previous parts uh, featuring episode one, uh, I got on a loose disc at Cash Converters in Wagga Wagga. Uh, but you also get a copy on the Duke Nukem 3D uh, CD-ROM. Um, just the full registered version, not the Atomic Edition. Huh. Welcome to the first major jump of Duke Nukem 2. Over and over and over and over. Uh, yeah, so... Ah. I actually don't know if you can currently buy Duke Nukem... 1 and 2 anywhere on the internet, uh, legally, um, because there's some question mark over who has the rights to it. A registered copy of Duke 3D shouldn't set you back too much, however. Alright. I'm done with that. Let's go underground. So, as I mentioned in uh, one of the Episode 1 parts, Episode 2 and 3 are largely more of the same, which is simply a uh, reality of how the game works. Um, it's uh, three parts of one game rather than a trilogy of games in their own right. Uh, Duke Nukem 2 does exist and it's a whole other game. This is Duke Nukem 1's second episode. A lot of nooks and crannies to explore down here. Shareware, like, looking at Shareware games like this, I really have to say, Shareware is something I miss very much, because 
it sort of became demos. Like, the shareware companies stopped really being shareware. Um, they, they slowly died out. And we kind of got demos instead for a while. And now we don't even get that. Like, you used to get a whole third of the game as shareware. And then you got, you know... A couple of levels, maybe, in a demo. And then you now get nothing. And sort of... The cynic in me wonders about it, because... Essentially, it's for the same reason that games companies will no longer participate in the game's journalism industry. Like, it's all just press releases and stuff. It's so people buy... As many people buy a game on day one as they can possibly get to. And then it doesn't matter if the game is good or not, sort of. It's the same with pre-orders. Like, they, they still encourage you to pre-order games, even though you have no idea if they're going to be any good. You're just sort of expected to... Oh, God, I hate this level. Um, order it and uh, pay for it before you know whether the game is good or not. And that's just to make sure that they get your money. Um... They don't want to risk you finding out that their game sucks and not buying it. And I think a lot of that is why you no longer see demos. Uh, and you definitely no longer see shareware. It's just like, oh, well, that's potential lost money, not because we've given them something for free, but because we might not get paid for what we have done because it's no good. Like, yeah. There's a lot to it and a lot to unpack there, and maybe I am being a little cynical, but I guess I've just watched sort of the quality of AAA gaming decline so badly, and like so many poor games get created and sell so well. And largely, like, you've got to kind of wonder is it because we no longer have a proper games journalism industry? where, you know, games journalists get an advanced copy of the game and can give it an honest review. Uh, games journalism wasn't so influenced by sort of the long hand of advertising. And as I said, maybe I'm just cynical and getting old and jaded. But I really do worry that that sort of is the way that gaming is big business now, like much bigger than it used to be. And the money in it is serious money and they can't afford to not make every dollar they can out of a game. And rather than making something high quality, the easy way to do that is just hype it up and ensure it sells on day one. I'm depressing myself a bit with this topic of conversation. But this is a very dull level that takes ages. It wouldn't take ages if I remembered how to do it properly. Okay, that's progress. feeling one of the firepower power-ups is in this level somewhere. I'm not too worried about it, but it would be nice to find if it is here. I don't know if I like this level better as a second level, or if I would prefer it as a later level where it would be more of an... Yes, firepower power. I knew there was one in here somewhere. 
more of an obstacle later or yeah. It's just a big jumping challenge with a lot of really thin platforms. And they get old fast. Oops. Oh. And little buggers who shoot you. The ability to look down in this game would be a godsend. I suppose that's why you don't have it. Nope, red door. I need the purple one. Ah! Aha, Duke, I see even with your stunted abilities you managed to find my moon base. It's a real dickish thing to say. What did I just do? I hit something that caused severe slowdown. I'm not sure what it was. Okay. Another gun. Now better equipped than I was halfway through the first game. You'll need to collect the robot hand. We're already getting the robo hand now. Ah, I remember this one. I think I wanted to do... Full firepower. I think by comparison, the last time I played episode 3, I found none of the extra guns. So, uh, this may be a bit of a once -er. You can jump on the drone bots, but not touch them anywhere else. Uh, whoops. Uh, I don't think there's anything that productive over there. Uh, yeah, okay, this bit, the towers. So the lunar towers here that we're exploring. contain a lot of annoying little elevator bits and they're really only annoying because the elevator can go up but not down and you don't have headroom to jump oh I so should have landed on him I'd be curious to know how helicopters work in like a lunar environment with no atmosphere. I'm no science major, but I would imagine they need, you know, air. Then again, so does Duke, probably, so his sheer manliness and pink shirt uh, combination allow him to defy the uh, laws of nature and exist with no oxygen.
All right, we've got the Robo Hand. Health would be nice. <laughs> Just smack into a wall. No, not here. There's the bridge. I think I need to get to the top of the middle tower. This one. If you think I remember how, you've got another thing coming. No, I've done it again. Up this way. Is there any chance that box contains... Nope. It contains dynamite, because of course it bloody does. Ah. A waste of health. Got it. Okay, no health, but through the level. <laughs> That's three down, seven to go. Uh, in the next part, we will carry on with level four.